دوی د ګمرکاتو نه پښتنه وکړي On August 15, 2021, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani fled the country. The government collapsed and the Taliban took control of Kabul. The speed of the Taliban's victory shocked the world and threw U.S. evacuation plans into disarray. This did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. Thousands of Afghans rushed to the airport, with chaos erupting as they tried to flee. On August 17, the new leaders tried to present a face different than their last time in power. They promised Afghanistan would not be used to attack other countries as it had been in September 2001 and vowed to protect women's right to work and study under the framework of Islam. On August 26, an attack by the Islamic State of Khorasan province, ISIS-K, Outside the airport killed 170 civilians and 13 US security personnel. On August 31st, the last US forces left Afghanistan, bringing an end to a 20-year war. The US spent more than 2 trillion dollars, lost more than 6,000 service members and contractors. Thousands of people who assisted the US over the years remain trapped inside Afghanistan. We worked intensely to evacuate and relocate Afghans. Secretary of State Antony Blinken promised that the US would work to evacuate them. We've gotten many out. In the first weeks of Taliban rule, many Afghan women protested, demanding equal rights. Az khatir ma elam mekunum ki On September 7, the Taliban announced a new caretaker government. Muhammad Hassan Akhun, on a U.S. sanctions list, was chosen to head the government. Sirajuddin Haqqani, on the FBI's most wanted list, was named the interior minister. There was no mention of the women's ministry, a department responsible for women's rights and advancement before the new Taliban rule. With the exit of the international community, humanitarian aid dried up, and Afghanistan's food crisis worsened. Combined with the U.S. freeze on the Afghan Central Bank's assets worth 9.5 billion dollars, the Afghan economy plunged into free fall. Si on veut que l'Afghanistan ne soit pas un centre de terrorisme. On September 13, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that poverty and hunger were spiraling out of control. and appeal to the world community for help. On September 24, the US paved the way for sending aid to Afghanistan by allowing limited engagement with the Taliban. Yo bada khatir che mukta pa tahsili maidan ke pati da agada che dal ta makhlooq taleem. Despite promises to protect women's rights, on December 26, the Taliban banned women from traveling alone. for more than 72 kilometers without a male companion. On March 23, 2022, the Taliban said girls' high schools would remain closed until they could be opened in accordance with Islamic law. On May 7, the Taliban ordered women to wear the head to toe burqa in public. On May 19, the Taliban said that female TV presenters should cover their faces. On June 22, a major earthquake killed over 1,000 people in the country's southeast. In Nama, we are deeply concerned about the apparent impunity with which human rights violations have been carried out to date. On July 20. A UN report estimated that about 60% of the population needed humanitarian assistance. The report also accused the new government of human rights violations including extrajudicial killings, torture and illegal detentions. It found the most notable aspect of Taliban's rule was the erosion of women's rights. By mid 2022, some 79,000 Afghan refugees have been settled in the US since the Taliban came to power. thousands more wait outside the US for their paperwork to be processed. 
On the morning of July 31st, Al-Qaeda's top leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri, was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Kabul. Even after a year, not a single country has formally recognized the Taliban government.